Good afternoon. Today we mark World Refugee Day, and I would like to honor, on behalf of the United Nations country team in the Philippines, the suffering, the courage, and the resilience of millions of people around the world who have been forced to flee from their homes as a result of violence and persecution. We are once again commemorating World Refugee Day in the midst of a global pandemic. And as we see, the coronavirus crisis continues to have an unprecedented impact on people around the world. But for those forcibly displaced, this crisis is hitting even harder in very specific areas. The UN in the Philippines has just updated its cooperation framework with the country, and we call it the socio-economic and peace-building framework for COVID-19 recovery. This is our blueprint for addressing the most immediate challenges of the pandemic, but also for achieving the sustainable development goals and ensuring that no one is left behind. It is in this context, for example, that UNHCR is working to ensure that refugees are not left behind in access to COVID-19 vaccines. In February 2020, UNHCR and Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, signed a memorandum of understanding so that refugees and other forcibly displaced people can access vaccines. I have been privileged of the past year to witness demonstration of mutual aid by Filipinos. And today, on World Refugee Day, we are celebrating this Filipino culture of hospitality especially to forcibly displaced people who have sought refuge and found home here in the Philippines. I would like to commend the Philippines for championing the welfare of refugees. And I would like to mention the example of the financial contribution of the government of the Philippines last October to provide life-saving assistance to Rohingya's refugees. The financial contribution was announced as an obligation rooted in malasakit, a Filipino term that means caring to the point of sharing the pay. Someone said that World Refugee Day is a reminder that there is no us and them. There is only us. One human family connected in ways we sometimes forget. So let us keep active our memory and our solidarity with those sisters and brothers in search of protection and hope. Maraming salamat po. Good afternoon. On behalf of UNHCR in the Philippines, I am very pleased to welcome you to today's virtual event to commemorate World Refugee Day an occasion to acknowledge the experiences of the millions of people forced to flee violence and persecution. Globally, we are now seeing more people forced to flee their homes than ever before. At the end of 2020, 82.4 million people sought refuge either across borders or within their own country. Here in the Philippines alone, nearly 267,000 people are presently displaced in Mindanao, forced to flee their homes by conflict and climate events. At the same time, hundreds of people from beyond our shores have also found refuge here from the violence and persecution in their home countries. These numbers are overwhelming, but we must not look away because each number represent a real person whose life has been torn apart through no fault of their own. By being here today, you have shown that you are ready to stand together with refugees and other displaced people. This year, we are celebrating World Refugee Day once again amid the COVID-19 pandemic which continues to rage across many countries. It has caused devastating loss of life and livelihood and exposed critical social and economic inequalities. But this pandemic has also taught us 
that we are stronger when we stand together. And as we have learned over the past year, no one is safe until everyone is safe. Despite the challenges they face every day, refugees and displaced people across the globe have stepped up, working and keeping their communities functioning. We call on people to continue including the forcibly displaced and stateless in our communities and our lives. Throughout history, Filipinos have demonstrated the power of inclusion, compassion, and humanity to refugees fleeing war and persecution in their home countries. Let us continue to imbibe this Bayanihan spirit as we recover from the pandemic because together we can achieve anything. Thank you very much and please enjoy today's showcase. Food is a universal language of kindness and community, an ever warm expression of compassion, a bridge between generations, an essential part of cultures. As we commemorate World Refugee Day, we're serving you stories of hope and inclusion through shared food and experiences, stories that will connect us through time and space. Everyone has a seat on the table. Join us as we explore the flavors of home and the flavors of hope. Throughout history, Filipinos have demonstrated the power of inclusion, humanity, and compassion. As early as the 1920s, we've welcomed at least nine waves of refugees fleeing war and persecution. From 1975 to 1992, Vietnamese boat people or refugees fleeing the Vietnam War reached Philippine shores. The refugees were initially rescued by fishermen and families living along the coasts of Bataan. 2,700 individuals lived in the refugee processing centers in Ulugan Bay and Tara Island, Palawan, where they were allowed to work, farm, and fish. Silipin natin ang Vietville sa Puerto Princesa, Palawan. This used to be home to more than 2,000 Vietnamese refugees. Today, it is a tourist destination where Filipinos get to experience the culture and heritage that the Vietnamese shared with us. Makakausap natin si Tran, isang refugee na sa Palawan na namalagi at nagkapamilya. Tuturoan din tayo ni Ann at Min kung paano gawin ng authentic chicken pho galing Vietnam. My name is Tan Minh Dung. I have been here in the Philippines for 31 years. Right now, we already entered the Vietview compound. I came here alone and all my family left in Vietnam. So I don't have any relatives here in the Philippines. I spent almost uh, five days on the sea by boat. And then uh, the first place uh, I arrived that uh, was Santa Cruz, Sambales. And later, the uh, UNHCR uh, processed some documents to transfer me to Palawan. From the left, you can see the Vietville restaurant uh, with the uh, white roof. And here in Viet Village, uh, we serve the Vietnamese authentic uh, dishes. We do have uh, a lot of tourists to come. They have a dinner, lunch, and even a breakfast here in uh, the Viet Village. In the distance, you can see uh, the lantern. During uh, Lunar New Year, we uh, do have celebrate Lunar New Year here in this village. Look at the right side, we have a Catholic uh, church that uh, the Vietnamese and uh, the Filipino use to see the Mass every Sunday. Right now, uh, we are entering the uh, Catholic Church. The Catholic Church here was built in 1997 when the former refugee camp already closed 
and all the Vietnamese remain here in the Philippines, we transfer uh, from the uh, former refugee camp uh, to here. And uh, as you see, the uh, bell, the altar, and the statue that we transfer it from the original refugee camp. At the first moment, uh, seems uh, it's a little difficult uh, to us to adjust or to adapt uh, what uh, the environment, even the food and the culture, etc. But later, because uh, the Filipino uh, are kindness people, and of course, uh, with your hospitality, so that's why easily for us to adjust later. So. So uh, the life here, that uh, seems uh, easily for us to adapt. Honest, the kindness and hospitality here in the Philippines, that's the three things I uh, like most. In front of me, uh, this is uh, considered as a marker to contain why and what the Viet Village was established here in the Philippines. This street named Hong Vương, the name of uh, the first king who established the Vietnam. And uh, you see, along the road, we uh, installed the light for the tourists, maybe at night, they can uh, tour around the village. And besides, we will introduce with them about uh, the history of the refugee Vietnamese when the Vietnamese still uh, here in this village. And this way, uh, also another stick, we call that uh, Tu Yo, mean to say freedom. And uh, you can see uh, over there, light the lantern that uh, the Vietview uh, restaurant management, they uh, made it as a decoration to attractive for the tourists uh, during the night time. Uh, so they might have a light uh, to enjoy uh, at the same time uh, to make the area uh, to be alive. And this way uh, uh, lead to my uh, small house. No, exactly my home is not a house. <laughs> When I left Vietnam, I was only 19 years old. So to compare the time that I stay in the Philippines longer to compare with uh, the time I stay in Vietnam. So I grow up here, I adapt the life here. Uh, and of course, I already mentioned with you about the kindness, about the uh, uh, hospitality of the Filipino. Uh, that's why I feel at home here in the Philippines. This one is uh, at the beginning when I came and right now it still remain the uh, original uh, figure of the house before was built that uh, still the remain uh, of the original house. Uh, those houses is still remain, and uh, right now no longer uh, no, uh, occupied by, by the Vietnamese, so that empty. So of course, I miss uh, my hometown. I don't dare to compare, but here in the Philippines, even I am not a rich person, but I feel content, and, uh, and my family do have and security here in the Philippines. Uh, entering the Buddhist temple. This Buddhist temple was built in 1997 as well. And uh, during that time, the uh, Vietnamese uh, Buddhist people used to uh, see or to offer the Buddha every 15, 30, uh, the uh, lunar calendar. When the Vietnamese already moved for US and Canada, but until now, we do have a Vietnamese community here, particularly the Vietnamese who came here as a tourist, 
uh, and uh, they marriage with the Filipino or Filipina. If those who uh, their relation is uh, Buddhism, they uh, uh, also used to come here to offer the Buddha uh, during the uh, uh, Lunar New Year and some occasion, occasion or even uh, uh, as well. I want to have a best of uh, wishes to all my fellow countrymen all over the world. Uh, secondly, during the pandemic uh, period, uh, that may be the time challenge us. And we try our best, don't ever give up, because uh, uh, the difficulty generally challenge and we learn more in our experience. Tôi tên là Phạm Thị Anh Tôi tên là Lê Thị Ngọc Minh Our experience living and cooking for the local and tourists uh, mean that uh, during the time we cook and we do the thing that we serve the Vietnamese food to the local people, even the tourists, that we bring the cultural of the Vietnamese, the symbolize of uh, what we learn and what we share to the tourists and even the local government here. And at the same time, uh, as you know, because of this experience, uh, we earn for our living and we earn the friendship in the village. The story of Vietville shows us that those who are forced to flee bring with them their own skills and talents, culture, and culinary heritage. And together, we learn that tututo tayo sa isa't isa at yung mayaman ng ating kultura kapag nagsasama-sama ang buong komunidad.
The Philippines' humanitarian tradition transcends borders, and the same spirit of compassion and inclusion lives to this very day. Tunghaya natin ang kwento ng mga refugee na dito na sa Pilipinas na malagi at nagkaroon ng sariling kabuhayan at kung paano nila napananatiling buhay ang kanilang kultura sa pamamagitan ng kanilang food business. We started with the zero. When we arrived here, we didn't have a single spoon. But thank God, this is blessing of God. Yeah, my name is Sardesha. We arrived in the Philippines last Friday, April 2017. We started with the with cart, fully small. And then we moved to the zone here. We started with biryani, samosas, and some curry, butter chicken. That is our best seller. After biryani, butter chicken is our best seller. Then we arrived here. We were really actually because I like our food, so we missed. I really want. I want. I was hungry. I really want to eat my roti chapati. So even. I tried it because we didn't know about that, about it was our first experience to move to another country. If you want to eat Indian Pakistan food, you have to go to UN or Makati. It's just really hard. So we can buy the nuts that we are on with. So we can also eat and then we can also offer the people if they are wishing to eat Indian Pakistan food, there's the money to go for us. But because of pandemic, we were closed, we few deliveries. And then thank God we have a new place now, it's bigger. So we are hoping our business will grow. We have 90 to 95 percent of the people in the streets. It's a big country. If you want to know what you want, 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 what you want. How do you feel that it has changed since moving to the Philippines? Even from even in your home country, if you are transferring, you are moving to another place, it's not easy. We are just the atmosphere, weather, the people, the community, the It's not easy, but now we are happy. I think uh, here many people open shawarma, but uh, not as like we are making. So many people, they are surprised for them when they see, oh really, this is the shawarma. I said to them, yes, this is the reality shawarma from Syria. I'm not back to Syria since I'm arrival to here to to Philippines because I have trouble in Syria. I cannot go. And even my family not there, so I don't have anything to back to Syria. Almost all our family houses already down in the exclusive, so it's hard to back. And 2011, because already start the war there, some of my friends suggest to me to come to here to, to Philippines. 
Before I don't have any plan, but when I meet the owner here in 2017, he suggests to me to buy his uh, restaurant. But I tell him I cannot because I don't have capital money. But he asked to me, okay, I can help you. You can uh, pay to me like installment. So when we started for a few capital money, a little by little until I close it to him and I make it my own name. Sham, the name for my city. That Damascus, the capital city for Syria, this name is a special name for me. For always I remember my city. Especially our food, the shawarma. My special food in the menu and I like it because I do all my best to, to make the test as like in my country. When I started, it's a little or few few income, but now everything is okay. All my, my stuff is local. When it start for the, the COVID and pandemic, many store or many companies, they are said sorry for the employees. They cannot pay the salary or they cannot continue. So they said to them, we are sorry to, to tell you to stop. But me, no, even in pandemic, I'm continue with them, same, same salary, same everything. I help for three times. I don't like to talk about that, but sure, when we know it's some people to, to need to help, we are not to stop for that. 10 years, how is moved? If this 10 years is move fast because I'm really resting in Philippines. And sometimes I tell people, me as like fish. If I go out the Philippines, I cannot make it. Happen. Yeah. Hi, my name is Hassan. I'm 18 years old. Uh, I've been here in the Philippines for almost nine years. So, we were not planning to buy a restaurant. The original owner was Pakistani, but then his wife wanted to go to Pakistan, so he had to sell the restaurant. While my father was at home, there was no work. He started to look for another uh, income, so he found this restaurant. We want to show our uh, the food of our culture so people can try it. Uh, sometimes we make a feast here. So some of our uh, Filipino friends, they come here, they try the food. We want them to experience our food because we experience their food. But me here, I'm used to eating the Filipino food, so we cook Filipino. I like adobo. I also like uh, champorado, uh, sopas. Para sa akin kasi, mas maganda pag uh, may isang tao. Gusto malaman kung ano yung culture ng isang tao. Para sa akin, food yung, yun yung paraan para mara, malaman nila. My friends are here, Dugong Pinoy, because I, I know their culture. I speak their language, yeah. Uh, we can understand each other now. But uh, before, I did not know anything. Our culture was very different. But now, I started to understand them more. They started to understand me more. For my friends, I'm the only one who's refugee here. Minsan pag lumalabas kami, ganun. Hindi ko na feel na Syrian ako tapos sila Pilipino. Nararamdaman ko talaga na magkaibigan kami. Lahat kami nagsasalita ng Tagalog. Parang walang bar barrier par to between sa amin dalawa. I'm happy here, yeah. Now I'm used to Philippines. Nung naging refugee ako, pwede ako mag-apply kahit saan. Uh, parang Filipino na din ako dito. Meron ako mga rights ng mga Filipino. It helped us around. A lot. Before we did not have uh, documents. Also at schools, they asked for the passports and papers. Before I could not uh, give it to them, but now everything I have it.
as like I hear for other countries how they are deal with foreigners or for refugees. So me, I feeling about that. I tell them no. In Philippines, I'm not feeling about that in any time. You know. Even when I go to to any uh, like departments or any 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 place for government, even the officer, they deal with me as like you are here. So. We not talk with you as like foreign, or oh, you are as like Filipino now. And after getting the refugee status, we start our business in 2019. We did for God. I wanted to say all refugees to work hard. If possible, start your own business. The government is providing you opportunity. So go ahead. So you're not going to get much of that. Know yourself, know your friends, know your family, and be happy. Para sa akin, lumabas kayo at uh, i-enjoy niyo yung mga, yung mga culture ng Philippines. Dahil pag nalaman niyo sila, pag na, natuto niyo yung mga culture nila, matutuwa talaga kayo. Uh, makisama yung mga Filipino, mababait. This 2021, we are commemorating World Refugee Day amid multiple crises as the COVID-19 pandemic, recurring conflict, and the climate crisis continue to affect us all, ordinary people have stepped up to help each other. Donors and partners have stepped up to help the most vulnerable in their time of greatest need. Silipin natin ang kwento ng Cafe Mediterranean at ang kanilang pagtulong sa mga refugee galing Syria. Hi, I'm Marla Moran from the Cafe Mediterranean. We were established in 1994, December 9th. So we're now 27 years old. We don't claim to be uh, authentic dishes from the Middle East. We mix it around, like right now we have lentil meat, meatballs, which are vegan, and we thought they would go with hummus and cabbage with an Egyptian dressing. So basically that's how it's made. We're, we're kind of like playing in our kitchen to come up with something really good, and the, and the customers seem to like it. Pretty known for our kebabs, our, our hummus, matabal, falafel, all of that are very, they sell a lot. Mostly the Middle Eastern food is doing very well. We're known for that. The Syrian menu, we've always had a special menu. They're developed with me and the cooks. Right now we have hummus bowls. So the base is hummus and we have different toppings and we try to change it regularly.
It was one of the very first dishes we launched for Syria and our customers won't allow us to take it off the menu. We've tried many times and bring it back, bring it back. So it's a mainstay. But they're really proud to be part of it. They really, really are. This whole Syrian thing, and even during the Tunisian war, they, it made them more aware of what's happening outside this country. So, so it's good education for them. We're doing pretty bad, like the rest of the world but we're doing well enough to stay alive. We haven't closed any of our branches, we haven't laid off any people, so we're very lucky in that aspect. You would think that COVID would end some wars, but it hasn't, it hasn't. In line with Syria, because we have been blessed, I feel we've been blessed, we thought we'd share those blessings. Especially this crisis in Syria, I feel that the people had nothing to do with it. They didn't even want this. These poor Syrians have nothing to do with that war. We just have no choice but to help in any way we can. I feel. I feel. I don't know how Syria can get better, but we'll do our part and this is our part. business owners you know as long as you can uh, we we go into business to make a profit but along the way we need to see that we have to give back it's important and it's good it's good to show our staff that too that they have to give as well to people who don't have as much so it starts the whole thing going you know the if people could help that would be really great Our hopes are things get back to normal so that we can actually give more. Things get back to normal for our staff, for, for, the, for the country, for the world, and for the Syrians. I know it's not enough, but we'll keep on doing what we can. Well, especially what is going on in Syria. I, there's nothing like it. And, you know, do, watching the news every day and researching, They'll never get their lives back. It's Filipinos, we aren't the richest country in the world, but there is, there is a world outside the Philippines that, that needs our help as well. Um, we have to help, we have to help. My hopes, we're gonna keep on doing this for as long as it takes, as long as we're alive and people are willing to eat the food. We are now seeing more people forced to flee their homes than ever before. In Syria alone, millions are still displaced a decade after the crisis began. But we have also witnessed the extraordinary generosity of people from all over the world, including Filipinos, that has saved millions of lives. The story of Cafe Mediterranean shows us that despite our own challenges, we can still do what we can to help. Together, we heal.
If you belong to a community that has welcomed refugees, or if you know people who have taken refuge in the Philippines, past or present, this is your chance to share stories of hope through food. Send us your recipe together with your story so you can be featured in the UNHCR cookbook. Together, let us inspire and open others to the joy of acceptance and community as we share life stories at the table. Mula sa mga refugee crisis sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo, magtungo naman tayo sa Mindanao sa krisis na kinakaharap ng ating mga kababayan na napipilitang lumikas dahil sa sakuna at labanan. UNHCR's presence for 40 years in the Philippines has allowed us to respond to numerous emergencies. We work with partners in the government and other sectors to respond to the protection concerns of the internally displaced, stateless, and persons at risk of statelessness. In accordance with humanitarian principles and international standards, we support them in rebuilding their lives in safety and dignity, and in achieving sustainable solutions. For communities affected by decades-long armed conflict, the road to lasting peace and rebuilding their lives in safety and dignity can take many years. Adito tayo ngayon sa Barangay Sambulawan, Midsayap, which is home to a community of displaced families that have been forced to flee because of recurring violence and clan feuds in the area. Kumusta po yung ano dito, yung mga, yung mga bakwit na nag... Punta dito, matagal na po sila nag-stay dito sa barangay? Uh, yung iba, nag-stay na dito kasi parang dito na sila naglalaglihod ng deli, ano nila. Pero yung iba naman, umoy na rin talaga sa kanilang ano, lugar o bahay. Kasi minsan dyan lang naman galing ang bakit sa kandila. Mm -hmm. Meron pa po ba nandito o marami yung umuwi na? Uh, number one example namin na bakit na dito yung sinuray. Sinura. Kasi dito na siya naglalaglihod, nagtahitahi na siya dito, so dito na siya nag Ng ano. Yung first po na nagbakwit kami sa Rido, baha, panahon po yun ang baha, ma'am. Nagdating kami dito sa Sambalawan, gilangoy lang namin yung mula bahay, tumawid kami sa may ilog, inilangoy ko lang yung anak ko na pangalawa, buhat-buhat ko lang. Tapos yung panganay ko, ipina, pinaakarga ko lang siya dito sa, sa likod ko. Wala kaming dala ni isa. Hindi naman nagkaroon ng problema doon sa pagdating ng mga evacuees noon? Hindi naman sir, kasi yung mga barangay council namin, kung may, may ano talaga bakit o may eh, ano, emergency talaga, tumutulong po kami, tinitingnan namin kung ano pa mga kailangan nila o kung ano pa mga ano nila. In 2020, UNHCR implemented a livelihood assistance project kung saan namigay tayo ng mga sewing machines at ng isang habian sa itong indigenous loom, they're now using the machines and the venue para uh, magbenta ng mga indigenous fabrics and also as an events venue. Ano po yung epekto sa community ninyo ng project? Alhamdulillah sir, uh, mas la, uh, nakatabang sa uh, committee namin uh, SWC. Uh, so paganay uh, da po so uh, project kami da po maka ngay so mga uh, solo dami uh, kwa nagkapasangan so committee nami da bangko nami mga meeting ami print kami pansamit chaya uh, da da lamisan da mga gamit uh, 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 alhamdulillah well, tingin so kura nami skano lang sa nakaapas kami sa uh, saguna na na uh, kana manun sa dita den ka problema okay da maslaa nakatabang kano uh, Kuana komite nami ais dobolusi. Malaki po yung tulong ng pagdating ng project sa amin. Maliban po dun sa nagkakaroon kami ng close na communication sa sa amin mga kababaihan. Naranasan po namin yung kung paano magpatakbo ng isang livelihood, kung paano kami makatulong sa kabuhayan ng sa kabuhayan ng pamilya po. Sa pamamagitan ng mga quick impact projects tulad dito. 
hindi lamang tayo nakakatulong financially, but it also fosters confidence and self-reliance. And of course, a peaceful coexistence between the host community and the forcibly displaced. In fact, they're like one big family, people who have lived there for a long time and people who have to come in because of they have to find safety. If anything, that's again another proof that Filipinos always will lend a helping hand and will open their doors for people who are in need. Ilan lamang ito sa mga pinagdadaanan ng ating mga kababayan sa Mindanao. Sa kabila ng mga pagsubok, nakita natin ang diwa ng pakikipagkapwa at pagtulong sa iba. Just as we saw with the nine waves of refugees, embracing our displaced neighbors can only enrich our own culture and make us stronger as one community. Together, we shine. And with the COVID-19 pandemic still threatening everyone's safety, we must do what we can to ensure that no one gets left behind. This World Refugee Day, we call on individuals, communities, and governments to demonstrate the power of inclusion, humanity, and compassion for those who are forced to flee. Let us continue welcoming those who are seeking safety from disaster and conflict. Together we heal. Let us embrace the rich cultures and wisdom that our feeling neighbor bring with them. Together, Together we, we learn. Let us bring out the best in one another as we coexist in the peace and community. Together, we sign. Let's work together to keep everyone safe, build a brighter future, and contribute to a stronger, more peaceful, and more vibrant world without forgetting the most vulnerable among us. Together, we can achieve anything.